Let's clear that. Okay. Right. Okay. So, uh, what I want to start off with today really is uh, something that's been talked about in the group quite a lot uh, today. Um, so, let me just get rid of this thing at the top. Okay, so basically I picked this up today. That I've, I've been away in Andorra with my mum and to Portugal and backwards and forwards. So I haven't really been on the groups very much for the last few uh, days. But now that I'm in Kuwait, I am sort of can keep up with it. Okay, so this uh, was Joe. And uh, what he's posted is basically uh, what Caroline and I were talking about earlier which is this issue about the, uh, a summons, okay? Uh, I posted the stuff, and I think I went through it uh, before, uh, a couple of weeks ago or something. But uh, this here is what it's about, okay? Uh, now, the legal advisor, it's about legal advisors, uh, what can they or what can't they do, okay? So that's what it's about. And this is, is it Portsmouth, Caroline? All of this, where they putting it in their skeleton arguments? Yeah, okay, cool. So what it is, basically we've been, I've been through and it's posted in the various groups uh, that a summons must be issued by a, uh, magistrate a justice of the peace and so the so basically uh in portsmouth uh we've got people that are challenging this and what's coming back from the council is the matter was considered in the case of our on application of banfield versus harrow magistrates court uh, by the uh, uh high court in 2012 Okay, now you see here at the back, it says ADMIM. So let me see if I can make this bigger. I don't know if people can see it. No, I can't make it bigger. Okay, but basically, so what you've got here, the first part is the name of the case. Then you have the year uh, that the judgment was made and that's in square brackets following the name of the case. Then you've got some letters. So, so this is EWHC. So what that means is the England and Wales courts, and this particular one is a HC, i.e. a high court. Uh, if it's an appeal court case in England and Wales, it would be EWCA. That then is followed by the judgment number. And then it tells you what division of the high court it is in brackets. So this is the high court in England and Wales, judgment 3801 from 2012, and it's in the administrative court. Okay. Uh, so if it was a property and trust matter, it would be PT. Uh, but there's all the different divisions which are outlined in the um, uh, court order to manual. Now, within this judgment, what they're saying is in paragraphs 2022, the court determined it is correct that the decision to issue a summons as a judicial summons, but that function can be carried out by Justice's clerk or an assistant class clerk authorized for that purpose, section 51.2 of the Magistrates Court Act uh, 1980, rule two and three of the schedule. Okay. Uh, of schedule one, paragraph two to the Justices Clerk rules 2005. Okay. Now, uh, what uh, if we go to the council tax admin and enforcement regulations, uh, it refers to the 1970 rules. And I've been through before 
showing that the 1970 rules were fully revoked uh, with the delegatory powers of this by the Magistrates Court Act 1980, uh, uh, where Parliament expressed its will in Section 51 that the summons must be uh, made by a Justice of the Peace. And there's a distinction between a judicial function and an administrative function. Okay, so uh, and then we've got the case law that a judicial function cannot be delegated. Uh, but what they've done is they made new rules in 2005. However, those rules are based on the 1970 rules and nobody who wrote that secondary legislation is bothered to actually read and keep up to date with what Parliament has said. In 1980, they said, you cannot uh, issue authorize a summons uh, unless it's by a justice of the peace. And that's still where we stand. That was reaffirmed in 2003 in the Tribunal and Courts Act. Um, and in the Tribunal and Courts Act, if we first find these rules here, okay, I'll show you how to trace a chain of authority. So let me stop this share. Let me open another window somewhere. Uh, have I got anything on the left? Okay. So let me share that screen. Okay. And get rid of this. And open a new window. Okay, so we'll look for the 2005 Justices Clark rules. Okay. And so just what we're doing now is we tracing the authority or the conferred powers. Remember, these rules here are statutory instruments, i.e., secondary legislation and they can gain their powers uh, from primary legislation okay so it tells you here statutory instruments its number and this is called the magistrates court procedure justices clark rules 2005 and it tells you here where it gets its authority from i.e. what has created the authority or what gives this document authority. So it's the Lord Chancellor in exercise of powers conferred upon him by Section 144 of the Magistrates Court Act 1980. So if we just look at that first, Magistrates Court Act 1980. And... Go and find section 144. Uh, what's that? Boom, 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 boom. Okay. R rules. Okay. And so what this says is as follows The Lord Chief Justice may, with the concurrence of the Lord Chancellor, make rules for regulating and prescribing, except in relation to any criminal cause or matter, the procedures and practices to be followed. Okay, so the only power conferred here is about procedures and practices. It is not about judicial decision making. Okay. <clears throat> so section 144 does not confer any powers uh, to delegate judicial uh, judicial decision making uh, uh, thing, and then the other one is Section Twenty Eight of the Courts Act Two Thousand and Three, and so if we go and find that, okay, so this here then is where they can make a. An authorized person, okay, 
but we need to find out what authority has Parliament given them. So the Lord Chief Justice may authorise a person, A, to give advice to justices of the peace on matters of law, or including procedure and practice. Therefore, that ties in with, the, with Section 144, procedure and practice. No decision-making powers. No judicial decision-making powers in connection with the discharge of their functions, including questions arising when the person is not personally attending. And to bring to the attention of justice of the peace at any time when the person thinks appropriate, any point of law, including procedure and practice. Okay? So that's it. That's all they can do. Advise. They cannot... The Lord Chancellor does not have any powers conferred under <clears throat> to uh, make uh, here yeah, to issue a summons, including a witness summons. He can't do that. Therefore, that is what they call ultra virus. So the Justices Clark Rules 2005. This part is ultra virus too. Okay. And Parliament has clearly expressed its will. Now there's a a a, 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 a basically Parliament's intent needs to be uh, interpreted by the courts. Okay, and Parliament's intent in the Magistrate Court Act, therefore, is very, very clear. Uh, and there's no conferred powers to issue a summons uh, either in criminal jurisdiction or in the civil jurisdiction. Okay? So if we look at the summons here, it tells us justice of the peace. The justice of peace may issue a summons. Okay? So going back then to this what the council this lady franny is telling uh this was to telling joe she is making an error of law so uh that then led on to uh as that was we rebutted that claim and then they brought on to uh the next part of the argument then was um where have we got it here right okay they've now brought in some case law so they know that that, that we're we're right with that one okay so i want to just look at this case law and go through it with you so that people can understand uh what's how you use case law Okay, so this is the, hang on, let me just bookmark this here so that I can easily get to it. Okay, so this here is the judgment that they are relying on. Now, the way that they've come across this is, um, where is it? Where the hell is the justices? Rules 2019. Hang on, I need to go and find uh, justices in here. Uh, Magistrates Court. Uh, justices Rules. Yeah, how are they? <clears throat> oh, well, I haven't got them there, but I'll just bring up here what I posted in the group. So this here comes from the Justice of Justices Clark Society 2019 rules. Uh, can I make this bigger? How the hell do I zoom in on this thing? Uh, zoom. Uh, sorry, bear with me. Ah, right, here we go. Zoom. Zoom in. Oh, hang on. Let's try zoom fit to window. No, 
We're on a Zoom in, okay. All right. Ah, that's right. Um, well, plus, plus, plus. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this is from the 2019 um, Justices of the Clark uh, Society, how to deal with uh, council tax. Again, this document is on the group somewhere, so that's it. So basically, what they've done is the council's read through this, okay, and has come across Banfield versus Harrow Magistrates Court. And you see there it's got a, 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 a superfix or whatever you call it, a suffix, the one at the top, which is the admin judgment, which we'll look at in a minute. Now, what it says here quite correctly, okay, is authority that it is not necessary to consider each summons, uh, each individual application for a summons in detail where a complaint list contains hundreds of complaints. Okay, because people, apparently freemen of the land, claim that you can't do this. You've got to issue individual summonses. Okay, so we'll now check that out. Uh, so that there basically is correctly saying it's authority for both listings. That's what it's saying, okay? Now, when we go into that judgment that it referred to, and we go to section 20, that's where they said, okay? So, uh, paragraph 20, that one there, it says, a general complaint is made by Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Banfield remark regarding the number of summonses that were dealt with at the same time. But I'm told with Miss Kelly Bond, she's the barrister, on instructions that last year over 20,000 liability orders were issued by Harrogate Council or thereabouts in similar form. And it's plain that the courts and councils up and down the country are grappling with very similar problems. It continues, the courts and officials have to devise sensible procedures which are efficient and fair in order to process these claims without overburdening the public purse. Okay, it continues then, in that regard, she is helpful. She referred me, i.e. the judge, to this case in which Sedley Lord Justice dealt with the question of the exercise of discretion and the power of delegation of authorities, in that case, the chief constable, and said in relation to the allegation that the chief constable should not have delegated his power to issue an ASBO in that case as follows. But it is for the chief constable to decide who is best suited to do it on behalf, on his behalf, and that is not for the court to second guess unless his choice is irrational or otherwise beyond his powers. So this should have set off alarm bells to the applicants of this appeal, okay? For a precedent to apply, okay, the facts need to be similar enough. Now this here is talking about delegated powers from the antisocial behavior order uh, uh, Act. Uh, I can't remember the full name of it. Okay. And therefore, this does not apply. But you see how the, the, uh, the uh, barrister or solicitor from the council is misdirecting the court. So, with this here, what it's saying is quite correctly. In the ASBO, Parliament has given different authorities as to who can authorize a summons. Okay. So, this here, paragraph 20, which they're referring us to, is irrelevant. It's got nothing to do with the question of 
can a justice of the peace under section 51 uh, authorize a summons? Uh, and in particular, can they authorize hundreds of summons at once? That's the, uh, that is what they're complaining about. The number of summonses that are dealt with at the same time. That's the point of appeal, okay? So then at 21, the, the, the court continues, okay, and says, Mr. and Mrs. Banfield uh, said that the magistrate could not authorize the council to issue summons on its behalf, okay? So the point, this is the next point of appeal. Can a council issue summons on behalf of the court? Okay. Now, what the judge has done very cleverly, okay, as I've just pointed out, the authorities make it clear that absent Wensbury unreasonableness, it is open to the court to make to take a sensible view. That there is incorrect, because that's what he's now trying to say and apply to liability orders, he's relying on antisocial behavior orders. And the Antisocial Behavior Act, uh, whatever that's called properly, is not the same as the Magistrates Court Act. Okay? So what, so this here, okay, is an error of law. But it gets worse than that, okay? He now says it is correct uh, that the decision to issue a summons as a judicial summons, but that function can be carried out by a justice's clerk or an assistant clerk authorized for the purposes, section 51 of the Magistrate Court Act 1980, rules two and three in the schedule one. We've looked at that already uh, in the Justice's Clerk's Rules 2005. So can you see how the judge uh, is not, basically is trying to give the answer to the council that it wants. Now, this here really is what is called a orbiter comment, a comment which is not relating to the question, i.e. the reasoning. So what uh, the, the question the court was asked to answer was, can the council issue a summons on behalf of the court? The answer that the judge has given doesn't answer that question. Okay? Uh, and therefore, this is not a precedent this is just a passing comment by a judge of his opinion. It's not an analysis showing the reasoning that uh, a, a justice's clerk or assistant's clerk can authorize a summons under Section 51 of the Magistrates Court Act. To have to do that properly, to make it a reasoned decision, i.e., uh, ratio descendii or whatever they call it in Latin he would have to have gone through the analysis that I've just gone through and he would have seen had he gone through the analysis we've just gone through that the Justice's Clark rules 2005 rules 2 and 3 of schedule 1 are what's called ultra-virus ultra-virus means they do not have parliamentary uh, authority to do the, the Lord Chief Justice and Lord Chancellor do not have authority to put those rules in. Okay, so they can't rely on 21 because that there is not a reasoned decision that supports the question can a justice's clerk or their assistants authorize? a summons under Section 51 of the Magistrates Court Act. Okay? And then the other one they refer to is Section 22. This is what they're relying on. Okay? What they're continuing 
is or what the judge is continuing to say here is it's clear designated uh, assistant did apply his or her mind to the question and decided to issue the summons in the case, including the claimant's case. An authorization was signed confirming that he had considered the matter and therefore authorized the issue of the summons. It is perfectly proper for a designated legal assistance, having decided to issue a summons, to authorize another person to affix his or her signature to it by way of a rubber stamp. See Brentford versus Justices of the Peace, ex parte 1975. This is an administrative or ministerial rather than judicial act. So the judge is very clear. He has demonstrated here, he understands the difference between a administrative and a judicial act. Okay. So going back to what I was saying earlier, when we looked at the, um, uh, the, the issue of the summons in section 144, it was clear that this 144, okay, they can only, uh, make rules regarding procedure and practice and that there is quite correctly as pointed out in the judgment not a judicial decision and therefore the proper interpretation of section 144 of the magistrates court act is understood that there's a difference between procedure and practice and judicial decision and similarly that there's very clear in the Courts Act 2003, and therefore the Justices of uh, Clark's Rules 2005 do not have parliamentary authority to do what they uh, have done, and therefore Rules 2 and 3 are ultra virus. They have no legal authority, and therefore. Uh, all the summonses issued for council tax are unlawful. Um, has anybody got any questions on that? The main thing is what I'm trying to get across is firstly, secondary legislation cannot undermine any primary legislation. That is a rule of interpretation, which is very clear, and that's covered in case law. And secondly, um, uh, uh, what was the second one uh, and secondly in regards when you read a judgment the facts must uh, fit the reasoned decision not a comment in passing and that's why I lost my appeal because I relied upon somebody else's opinions just like the uh, like the uh, King's Council uh, for the liquidators, and then the judge pulled him out the shirt and opened a door for him. And this was the reason I lost about orbiter versus uh, reason. Okay, anybody got any questions about that? Mark, my concern here, where where I'm seeing a curveball, I'm trying to think like yeah. a sloppy solicitor, I am absolutely convinced that she is going to argue that the LGFA 1992 and what um, the, the whole topic of council tax is an administrative function. She's going to uh, try that, and... That's fantastic if she does that, Caroline, because then she's admitted it's an unlawful administrative court. Brilliant. Okay. And that then reverts. So there we have to remind the judge that he is, he under section 148 of the Magistrates Court Act, he is sworn to follow common law. And he does not have authority to make administrative decisions. He has no authority for that at all. That 
those administrative decisions can only be made by the high court uh, through judicial review. In other words, this is now out of his jurisdiction. And out of his jurisdiction, and uh, he can't do, they can't do anything. And therefore, he must dismiss the council's complaint. Anybody else got questions on primary Mark, legislation? And Mark, can you legislation? just yeah? Can you just repeat that last sentence? Um, uh... Okay. So basically, magistrates do not have authority to deal with administrative questions, uh, and those are dealt with by the High Court uh, through a ju a judicial review. So, uh, as that's outside of the purview or the authority or the jurisdiction of the magistrates' courts, they must dismiss the appeal because they do not have jurisdiction to deal with it if the council argues that it's an administrative matter. Say again, you said who has, um, they can uh, um, dismiss the appeal? I thought you said the they yeah, the, the case. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, not the appeal. The the magistrate must dismiss the claim, the complaint, because he does not have jurisdiction to deal with administrative court as an administrative court. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Now, um, when I okay, anybody else got any questions on this? Yeah, Mark. Uh, I put a question in the chat. So, if they are unlawfully issuing summons yep. in the book, then how can that be challenged? Uh, basically, it's quite simple. Okay, there's two quite. They, they will try and deal with it in two different ways. The first way is that um, the, they will say your presence cures the defect of the summons. OK, now to stop that argument in its tracks. Um, thank you for confirming that there is no lawful summons. I will see you later. OK, because if there is no lawful summons, there is no matter before the court. And, and that's covered well in case law. So, so, so then why say see you later? Uh, well, you just walk out because there is no reason for you to be there. The the other thing to do, um, Ahmed, that I did, I mean, all my emails go ignored with, with, with the magistrate's court these days. But what I did do is um, I went and said to them that I had a suspicion that the summons was unlawfully issued mm -hmm. and I wanted to call out the defect of the summons. Now the summons isn't defective. No. It does not exist. It's void from the beginning. There is so no I was summons. pointing out, Mark, that literally I was pointing to the, I was literally saying to them that this is the defect. Um, my appearance is to it, it is not because I'm acknowledging the right. lawfulness of the summons. That that was how I did it. And yeah. so literally, Ahmed, what what we're doing. We're challenging the court, so we're. Um, some people are just allowing the uh, the default judgment not going. There are a good few people from Portsmouth who have done that. They've just not gone. They've then um, allowed the default judgment and then applied for a section one forty two, and in that section one forty two, they've then raised that actually they they believe that the summons was void. Mm -hmm. under, uh, what, uh, under what legislation is cited in the appeal? The section 142 of the Magistrates Court Act that they... Oh, no, 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 that's not my question. My question is, is if you raise the section 142, yeah. in that, what are, you, what are you citing? What What is your legal grounds? Everything, everything that we've just gone through, the Magistrates Court Act 1980. Okay, okay. Yeah, ba basically, what, what you're saying is the court has made an error. There was no case before it because the summons was defective. 
Uh, well, sorry, the summons, uh, there is no lawful summons, therefore there was no matter before the court. Okay. And there's also the fact, Ahmed, that there is no case. Also do a screenshot of court serve to show that there was actually no court booking. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Uh, I don't see uh, how... They, they 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 trace their tracks, the council and the court, via the um the paperwork, because I've done this right. Say, uh, well, not summons, but for the memorandum of entry. Yeah, and they said, well, this is the paperwork. So the paperwork is we issued you with a bill, yeah. which obviously you know, was is 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 supposed to be a demand. Yeah. And then we sent you a demand. You still didn't pay. And these are our records to prove that. Then we did this. We did that. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah. they they show their legal position procedure according to the Local Government Finance Act or the regulation. Yeah. Say we've done what we have. Now, obviously, what we are calling out here is that the well, council... Well, do it properly. Yeah, the council cannot issue the summons. How, uh, so uh, when, we, when we when we go about when we go about what just Caroline just said, yes, they they issue the bulk listing, and the bulk listing is given a case number. So yeah. if we were to challenge the the basis of the case number, then the court or the council could say, well, we bulk administer all cases. Yeah, uh, no, no, Ahmed, that the legal, what gives them the legal precedence to bulk bulk. Here, everything is the question because that's what oh, okay for the bulk hearing. That yeah. is very, that's very simple. Okay, mm -hmm. you can have more than one claimant and you can have more than one defendant in a complaint, right? Okay, so there, that, there is that... no upper limit, or okay, it, it must be a minimum of one, okay, uh, uh, of each, and okay. there's no specified upper limit. Okay. Can, I, can, I, can I can I go back to something that? Caroline said. Uh, which... Just hang on a second, Alex. Can you just uh, keep your thought in your mind, Daniela, first? Yes, a quick question, Mark. You said when we are in court, we tell the magistrates that they are not authorized to deal with administrative questions. And they right. will come back and say, what do you base on your assertion on? So do we just present to them exactly what you presented to us? Uh, that chain of legal uh, yeah okay so we shouldn't just quote according to that or according to that we should go through the same process you have been tonight yeah and basically the caroline's question was if you go through this and they turn around and say that's irrelevant we are only here to administer council tax that is the admission of being an unlawful uh administrative court Okay. Oh, so we shouldn't go in just saying you can't do any administrative questions. We should go first through your presentation. Well, well no, then... you, first, you first need to go through that the uh, summons is non-existent. In, in, in law, it's non-existent. And your being there present uh, does not cure the de defect. Of the summons. Daniela, the first thing you need to do is FOI the council and try and get from the court who it was that ad who ad authorized the summons. You, that is you the don't first thing. Ask, you don't ask the council, you simply ask the court. What they ignore you. Mark. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, well, no, you send them reminders. Okay. <laughs> and then when you get there, then you tell them before we can proceed with this matter, I've sent you all these reminders. Uh, where who authorized the summons? Literally, my section 111 was put in on the 31st of May. Yeah. I have been sending reminders every two weeks. I'm literally finding more and more email addresses of the court. Nobody is. Yeah, well, that, there's a different matter, and we'll have to find out how we uh, sort that. Okay, Alex. So just a second. So you ask the court Oops, who yeah. authorized the summons? Yeah, the, it, it's a court document. It's a court. Uh, they are responsible for the creation of the summons. 
Okay. okay. They must authorize it and they must keep a record of who authorized the issuance of the summons. They do not need to keep a paper copy or anything, but on their oh. record, they must have who authorized the summons. Okay. And then we follow the process you described. Thank you. Okay. Alex. Uh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to jump in in front of you, Daniela. No, 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 that's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. I didn't see that you had your hand up. Okay, going back to what Caroline suggested, which is a very good suggestion, is that everybody always checks uh, the court serve listings. Yeah. Um, so in my recent uh, situation, mm -hmm. where I was sent a summons and I contacted the court and they were super helpful and they were like, there's absolutely uh, nothing here. Definitely not. Yeah. Um, so I waited until court serve came up. And uh, so my listing was supposed to be for 1 p.m., which kind of makes sense because we know that the council want yeah. to meet with you and talk with you. But there was absolutely nothing listed for 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. And the bulk listing was 2 p.m. Yeah. So that probably applies everywhere. Yeah, everywhere they ask you on your summons to come an hour early so they can try and get you into contract. Yeah, but the thing is, if you've got a summons and you check with the court and they tell you 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 do not, mm -hmm. and then you check on you know the court listings, yeah, and and there is nothing there for the time that you are supposed to be there. Well, then you. You've got a double, uh, a double. Uh, uh, yeah, but basically, again, what, what? I mean, that there, in essence, okay, would be a a, a non judicial decision, a procedure, i.e., it doesn't really matter, and you them being there, and you being there would cure that defect. I'm talking about a judicial decision which is being done all over the country uh, without authority. You know, I, I, I agree with that, Mark. So, so yeah. you're absolutely correct. And, uh, but I think equally Caroline is correct. And that you know, each, each thing that we can list- that Yeah, shows, yeah, yeah. The more evidence, the better, yeah. That shows procedure is not followed, then, then, then the better, because okay. evidence yeah. is evidence. Agreed. Because, Alexander, we're, we're all entitled to the due process of law. So right. my argument when I get there on the 25th of January is literally the fact that the due process of law hasn't been followed. The fact that there was no number, there was nothing on court serve. Nobody's answering me about who actually authorised this bloody summons. The costs on the summons are unlawful. I mean, and you can just go on and on and on yeah. and on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But, you know... We need to do it just in a logical and factual way and not be upset. Oh, no, absolutely. Oh, I was Caroline, meant to I mean, not today. be upset. <laughs> right, because I know you're doing... Hey, you, haven't heard the, you haven't heard the bloody recording of my last, my last stay of execution in the court. I remained as calm as everything. I was so calm, they all walked out on me because they just they couldn't face it. You see, so there is the power. Absolutely. There is the power. Bravo. There is the power. The power is in 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 in, in the strength of your calmness. Because Absolutely. in the strength of your calmness, you you hold the court and they walked out. So yeah. bravo. Bravo. Absolutely. Right, let me stop this recording.